Hey guys, it's Adam and Jay here in our mobile arrow work van. And we're actually uh, going to be talking about drone news gathering today. So we've got a tip from a local news source that there are some homes that are falling off into Lake Michigan. So we're going to go ahead and take a little field trip today. We're going to go out and, and see if we... Yeah, yay. Hey, field trip. Jay got his permission slip <laughs> so signed and everything as, as yes. long as he said he could go. So we're heading out to the field and uh, we're taking you with us. Now what you hear in the background is a little bit of chatter. It's so one mile, turn left. Let's talk about it, some of the equipment that we use when we go out on these types of little missions. So we've uh, we've obviously got a GPS, so that's always good to have. So we know where we're going. Right. Uh, you probably hear the scanner going in the background. Um, we use a, a scanner, uh, an online scanner from Police Scanner. You can download it in the App Store. I believe it's even free. Right. Um, there's a bunch of police scanners out there. Some are paid, some are free. This one happens to be free. You can search by uh, country and town and police department, everything. Really good to have if you're interested in news gathering because, um, you know, if you've got downtime in between your normal work, you can go ahead and listen to that scanner. You never know. You might hear a big event going on in your area like a fire or a major catastrophe of some sort. And where are we going? What are we going to? Well, we're going to, uh, again, on Lake Michigan, there are some homes that the lake has started to erode the, the shoreline away. And these houses are in a precarious situation, similar to like some of the homes out in California where they're starting to fall off into the ocean. First it's the deck, then it's uh, you know a portion of the house. So we're gonna go out and see if we can get left some close-up shots of what's going on. I'm actually turning down the volume on the GPS so it quits interrupting us here. <laughs> um, and, and, and what drones are we using today, Jay? Today we have the P4 that we are bringing, which is a good, versatile little machine. We have the Inspires back at the shop, but right. it's easier just to throw the P4 up in the air. You have yours and I have mine. We're gonna try and maybe uh, cover both of them and, and so you can see how we shoot and what we're looking to shoot when we actually go out. Right, and the reason the P4 is great, and, and including the P3 uh, right. before that, was that you don't have to put landing gear down, you don't have to put uh, you know, extra stuff on it, you don't have to install the camera, you basically take it out of the case, it's ready to go. The other thing is too, is it's very small. Um, typically we'll carry ours in a backpack or in the stock case, and it allows us to get on site really quick, be very non-discreet, and get it into the air. And the other thing is the flight time, right? Right. Yeah. If you're on the scene of a news story, something like a fire or something like that, you may have to be in the air for 20 minutes. So it enables us to get up in the air and actually stay there for an extended period of time versus like the Inspire where you realistically have a good solid 10 minutes to 15 minutes of flight time. Right. Um, so it's important that you're able to stay up and flying as long as you need to. Um, and the fact that it's a small aircraft, you know, it's not going right. to do a lot of damage should you have an accident. Now, one of the things I like to talk about with people when you're doing this kind of work is um, you know, the legality of it, so to speak. So, um, you know, whether you're doing this as a hobbyist and you're donating your pictures and your video to a local newspaper or news agency or you're doing it for commercial work, there is a little bit of a gray area there because of the whole NOTAM filing process and things. We're actually doing this more on the hobbyist side today, more of a fun, uh, you know, little field trip if you will right. but one thing if you're doing anything where you're over the scene of something you don't want to be flying directly over people you want to keep that distance keep a safe distance away don't fly over a house if it's on fire or fly down into the fire you know keep your distance all we're really doing is we're getting an elevated view no no different than somebody on the ground with a camera well we're gonna be over the lake and we're gonna be over the lake in this case exactly right. so you know don't ever put uh, life-saving people in harm's way don't fly over them don't distract them for what they're trying to do uh, because that can just really uh, there's so many reasons you don't want to do that and in fact if you recall in one of our last vlogs we talked about uh, a famous youtuber who, who does some of that uh, in his videos so we don't want to emulate that we want to make sure that everything that we're doing is safe and, uh, and, and respect people's property and things like that usually in public places there's always somewhere you can park that's public or a parking lot, something where you're not driving on 
somebody's personal property, you want to be be careful of that. Yeah, you don't so, want to be trespassing right. or you know anything like that. One of the things I recommend too is if you if you have enough time, um, if the event that you're planning on shooting, if you have enough time, get on Google Maps or Google Earth, take a look at the location and kind of scout around for maybe an area that you can set up. That way you're out of everybody's way and um, you have a, a safe place to take off. You're not driving on somebody's personal property and things like that. So we, I've already done that today. We are gonna be taking off from a, a parking lot um, and hopefully we'll be able to kind of cover how we set up quickly and, uh, and then we'll get those shots from the air and uh, hopefully we'll provide some tips for you. Uh, guys, make sure you like and subscribe as always. And uh, if you have comments or questions about anything we're doing, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Otherwise, we're gonna continue driving to our site here. Right. So they call this news gathering. Some agencies call it stringing or stringers. If you've seen the movie, uh, Night, was it Nightcrawler? Night, yeah, Nightwatcher, Nightcrawler, Night Night yeah, Night yeah, yeah. With uh, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal. he uh, discovered the art of uh, kind of independent or freelance news gathering because obviously news agencies can't be everywhere at the same time. Um, sometimes a, a, a private person is just in the location uh, sooner than anybody else and maybe you catch footage that nobody else has because you were there first. So this is an opportunity to, you know, share that imagery with local people, local papers, and things like that. And uh, it's just something that you can do in your spare time if you do have a spare time. Well, and again, you don't want to get in the way if it's fire or police. You don't want to right. obstruct them in any way. You don't want to, you know, just you want to stay back and not uh, hinder their whatever they're doing, their investigation, the firefighting, or any of that. Safety is number one. Right, because the last thing, exactly, if you, you, you make a bad name for yourself as somebody that is always at a uh, accident scene or something and you're always in somebody's way, uh, you're gonna be ran off pretty quickly, so not something you wanna do. But we all know now that everybody has a camera right on them, so. Exactly, we've all got that right on our phone. Right, you know, so it just makes it a lot easier to get the uh, get the picture you need and and then maybe sell it to a newspaper or you never know it could be a tv station that would want your footage but again you know you got to do it in a safe manner right for louisiana bruno we got 40 37 street i'm trying to look up right outside michigan at home it'd be good for the camera let's see if you need that Oh yeah, you can see where they got a fence up over there. Okay, the sign. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Five six three seven. Yeah. Cool. All right, now we're on site. We got to get our drone set up here and get going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get set up, get the drone assembled, and get in the air quick. The nice thing we like about the P4 is you can get it out. You can get these props on fast and get in the air quickly. Props are almost done going on. And you did a pre-flight before we left the shop? Yeah, we typically will pre-flight all the aircraft the day before so we know the aircraft is airworthy. The only thing we're gonna do is our final checks here right at the end. All right, we got our copter assembled. We're gonna get our gimbal guard off. Props are on. We've already done our pre-flight back at the office. Time to get it on the ground and get this thing in the air. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of staying out of the wind and out of the sun. And I can see that we are already locking on to satellites here. I am used warming up and will be ready to go. I'm verifying that I have 2,718 JPEG pictures available. And if I switch to video, I can shoot 46 minutes of video. What are you shooting in? Right now we're just shooting in full 4K resolution. That way we can always scale it down. Uh, on the on the still photography, we shoot in JPEG and or RAW at the same time. 
Uh, one thing too, the reason we like the J, the uh, DJI copters is because of that live view, that live broadcast that you can do through YouTube. So if we had an event where we want to live stream that, we can do that through YouTube. What are you looking at? Right now we're checking out this dock situation here. There are definitely some homes that are very precariously hanging on the edge here. And again, we have to be aware, we had an incident one time where we were flying by Lake Michigan and we had one seagull come in and then the next thing you know there were seven or eight. So you have to be aware because birds are very territorial and you don't want them to take down your drone. Make sure you always stop your recording before you shut things off that way you don't lose any footage and then what i also recommend doing is always also reviewing your footage and making sure that the video you have or the stills you have are on your card uh we've we've gone out and done a shoot before where we got all the way back and we're like where the heck is the footage at so always make sure you review that footage uh because if you don't then you know you may lose the shot you may not be able to go back there again and we did get the shot so that's good I'm gonna pause that, go back, check out. Looks like we took about 18 photos, some video. I'm gonna scroll back here. So yeah, looks good. Well, what do you think, Jay? Do you think we got the shot that we needed to get? I absolutely think we got the shot. Why do I know? Because before we left, we, we, checked, check it, right? we checked our footage. We got the video, we got some great pictures, and we'll be posting them up behind us here or in front of us. So you'll be able to see, but yes, absolutely, I believe we got the shot. It turned yep. out really good. What do you think? I think so. Luckily, we got uh, we got it done before the weather's coming in. The seagulls didn't get us this time, <laughs> right? And we even had a couple spectators. That always seems to gather. Uh, you know, drones always gather spectators, usually for the good, but sometimes for bad. So uh, right. it turned out this was uh, neutral or for good, I guess. Yeah, for good. They just wanted to see what we were doing. Right. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always good to get out on the road again. You want to respect people's privacy. Uh, you don't want to trample on anybody. You don't want to go on property that you don't belong on. Because like we've been saying in the videos before this, that it's we're doing it for good, for safety reasons. And to try and get something good, it's not worth a shot if you're going to screw somebody up or hurt somebody. It's just not worth it. Right. So guys, thanks for tuning in to this special field trip edition. <laughs> Yay, field trip. Yay. So hopefully they'll let us out of the office and shop more often. <laughs> uh, we've got more how-tos and more behind-the-scenes type videos coming up soon. But thanks for joining us on this one. Hopefully it was worth coming along. Make sure you like and subscribe. Again, that button is over here, That's down it. there yep. somewhere. Yep. Uh, and uh, we'll on see you the, next time. Yeah. On the road again. On the road again. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, we'll guys. see you. Bye.